All right, guys, thank you very much. Thunder E here, and we have the Surface Studio in-house. We've had it for a bit of time, and you know this video is gonna be all about gaming. Now, before we start, I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor, Ivacy VPN. Definitely check them out. We'll give you more details later. What is the Surface Studio all about? Now, this, I think, is a replacement to the Surface Book, which was a two-in-one. It was a tablet and a keyboard separately, or at least a laptop. But this takes things to a very different level. Now, on one hand, you can put it into a laptop mode, and it's a laptop. It feels like a solid laptop. You know, you've got a nice keyboard, great trackpad, by the way. Or you could put it into what I like to call cinematic gaming mode, which is basically temp mode, but allows you to just enjoy the real estate, look at content in game, or you could tilt it back down and drop it into tablet mode and use the pen or just view content, whatever you want to do, start writing, you name it. That's cool. That's what Microsoft likes to do with surfaces. But I wanted to see how well the surface games and how well the surface is for consuming content. Now, I've used it for about a week roughly. And I have to say though, it is quite versatile. Taking it from place to place, whether I'm outside watching content or I am inside gaming, I've found it to be quite versatile. Now, this packs in a lot of uh, performance for what you'd expect. An Intel 11th gen processor, you've also got 32 gigs of RAM, it's about a terabyte of storage in here, you can go up, I believe, to, to two terabytes, uh, and you've got an RTX 3050 Ti. Now, just to bring the words of my buddy, Danny Winget, we had a discussion and we thought, mm, the 3050 is not so much, right? But I might be wrong. I might be wrong with that assumption of what the 3050 can do. But before we even move forward, let's talk about this display and what we can do for entertainment. It's a 120 hertz display, which means your gaming is going to just look better. And also uh, your viewing, viewing content will be great. Going back to the whole gaming premise, right? You watch content on this, it looks great. How does gaming actually perform? So we started off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now this is a game that Actually, we use quite a bit to test and game on a couple of platforms. And on this, it ran pretty well. I mean, you can see it plays well. And the one thing I wanted to see was how gaming performance actually varied using the standard charger from Microsoft or third-party charger. Now, Microsoft has a 120 watt charger, while uh, the third-party chargers I used were 100 watt PD chargers from either uh, Anchor or Speedit. Now, Running um, Shadow Tomb Raider, doing some benchmarks, I got 37 um, frames per second for both the standard charger and the third-party chargers when I ran the game at high. And I ran the game at medium, I still got 51 for the standard and 51 for third-party, which means you can use a third-party charger even if you forget your um, Microsoft charger to game. And that's great. And it takes advantage of those two Thunderbolt ports there are two downsides to it. One is that it's gonna give you an indication that you're gonna be slow charging, which is fine. The other is that you won't take advantage of fast charging, which the, the standard charger does at 80% within an hour. So those are the two things you miss. But back to that full gaming experience, what I found just moving from game to game is that this system can actually play games well. So we played some Call of Duty uh, Warzone. Warzone ran at between 49 to about 55 frames per second, and it ran well. I mean, honestly, there were limited hiccups, and it just was pretty smooth uh, gaming performance overall. We moved over to Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal was the same. Ran Doom Eternal on medium, and we got about 110 frames per second, which was great. And you, again, with that kind of fast-paced action, we really want that. Plus, taking advantage of that 120 hertz display really showcases how well it, it, it games. And I, I can't stress enough how much I like to game in the tent, or I was, should I say cinematic gaming mode, where you're really just jumping into the display and gaming as much as you want to. Microsoft has also talked about Xbox Game Pass and how that's integral to gaming on PCs with Windows 11. So we went ahead, we downloaded Game Pass, installed, we made sure uh, we also downloaded Gears 5. We could play that uh, through the cloud, but wanted to see the performance of a game from Microsoft directly on here. And Gears ran really well. Benchmarks gave me about 62 frames per second on average, but my gaming experience, I got uh, up to about 90 frames per second, which was good. Now, granted, this was more limited, not some of the open world areas, but 
we got a solid gaming experience. So with that said though, it means that this can game pretty well. You know, it can do well with all the games we've downloaded and also can do well with the cloud games like uh, Jedi Fallen Auto, which we played off Game Pass Cloud, as well as Injustice, which all ran well 1080p gaming. The only one game that didn't run well was Cyberpunk 2077. No one should be surprised about that. Run about between 21 to 27 frames per second, and it just wasn't that playable. So that's the only thing, but honestly, I don't think anyone would care about that. Temperatures, however, did go up to about 110 degrees. My range was between 108 and 110, which is acceptable, especially for a laptop like this. Sound here was impressive. Microsoft has done a really good job with building a sound system and sound echo chamber that is impressive from tweeters on the side to, sorry, from subwoofers on the side to tweeters flying through the keyboard, which you have to take a listen. Honestly, it's a great experience and I think everyone who buys this or is gonna use this should you literally put it into tent mode to just take a full advantage of the speaker system. I think overall, for me, this is a solid offering from Microsoft and I think it's actually a better offering from the Surface Book line. So I'm glad they've done this. My few caveat here are, is that number one, Microsoft hasn't added more uh, entries into the GPU. So there's only a 3050 Ti. There's no 3060, 70 or 3080 variants uh, for that. And pricing, surface pricing is always kind of all over the place. So it's something that a lot of people might find, you know, just not appealing.